Rise and Shine Rwanda, it's Friday the 27th of March. Coming up on today's weekly review show. We attended an event that rewarded the best customer service providers in the country. We looked into the business of print media in Rwanda. New coach, same ambition. McKinstry sets eyes on FCON success. And we profiled a media personality that has become the king of the jungle. Good morning and welcome to our weekly review show where we take you back to the best of the week here on Rise and Shine Rwanda. It's just gone 7 o'clock in the morning. My name is Rigi Sisheja. And I'm Makeda Mahario. Over the next hour, we'll be bringing you a review of the week's top stories, analysis, debate and insights into the stories making headlines here in Rwanda and around the world. And the Rise and Shine crew have throughout the week been diligently gathering and preparing everything you need to know about what's going on. Well, it's been a busy week for us here at the Rise and Shine headquarters. One of the most interesting stories that we reported on this week was the just-concluded e-governance forum. As we enter the last five years of Vision 2020, Rwanda has embraced e-governance more and more, a way to explore the impact of e-government on the socio-economic transformation of the country's population. The goal is to transform, the, uh, to transform Rwanda from an agriculture-driven economy into a knowledge-based economy through electronic governance. A two-day conference took place in Kigali aimed at promoting ICT as a new tool for service delivery. Let's take a look back at Wednesday's report. Rwanda is in the process of boosting existing e-governance systems for improved service delivery. With an economy that's mostly agricultural driven, the country has been leaning more and more towards technology with electronic governance at its heart. The transformation has many dimensions for sure. The first dimension is about access. We want to make sure that when we talk about that transformation, it doesn't remain a myth or something that people hear about, but they don't understand or own. So uh, access to ICTs, and we're talking about mobile devices, we're talking about computers, television, is very, very important. And we've been tracking the progress that we are doing uh, in this regard. Secondly, uh, skills is very important. We are talking about digital literacy and the digital inclusion, being able to put everyone as part of that transformation agenda. And thirdly, and I think that's where people like to focus, is on services. What is it that is available online? Uh, what uh, part of the business processes and government processes are, are done electronically? And, and uh, I would say that Rwanda is really moving across all those areas uh, at a very high speed. The two-day Commonwealth e-Governance Africa Summit 2015 held in Kigali under the team Smart Governance Through a Network Government has attracted more than 200 participants from across the globe, including policymakers, regulators and application providers to promote ICT as a new form of service delivery. Rwanda is moving from an agricultural-based economy to a knowledge-based economy. And everybody thinks that's an easy transition. You just need a charismatic president, a champion, people who are willing to bring the technology and how that can be applied. Uh, to an extent that's true, but it only goes part of the way. We have an expression in English, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater. It, it isn't about either or, it's about both and. So it's how can these incredible new technologies, which are undoubtedly transformative, actually help Rwanda develop as a modern economy in the 21st century. And that will require using the technology to support agricultural systems, using the technology so people in the poorest and the most marginal areas can find out what the government's doing, what the best practices are. And of course it's building new types of economic activity. And one of the exciting things about digital switchover, for example, is the way in which it's enabling a whole new generation of broadcasters to develop. Organized by the Ministry of Youth and ICT in collaboration with the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization, 
the forum highlights e-governance as the employment of technology in providing efficient service to citizens and easing the government's role. You have been experiences even the Hugo, very technology based, but na haritera mbere ni ni wajezeho. Chane yuko mwa na dufte ijihugu chitari chini ni. Visabu mutoke gusa na wewe visabu chini, visabu kufutu gengi, futu mutoke muzima, hanyuma ukabushura kuwa uli na ebo yuko wa wabikor. It's also a chance for Rwanda to showcase its progress in e-governance as well as learn from other countries and stakeholders. There is quite a lot of progress um, that has been done uh, in technology adaptation uh, for agriculture sector in Africa and Rwanda is in the leading position in that regard and we are very happy to witness such developments. A great opportunity for the country to get closer to its ambitions. Regisi Sheja, Rise and Shine Rwanda. And joining us in studio is Hervé Lutadiengwa Gaviro, CEO of Medmasoft Limited. What am I saying, Hervé? What am I saying, Hervé? Eh, it's your new fuzal community, Chambere. Ese iyo ba fuzeko Rwanda, Rwanda hozari economy yari based kuri agriculture. Ubungu bu, ubu hinzi bu kwa atari bugo tureba chani chani ni kutoka wadusha kwa kuresha ikora na buhanga umeni bikuugiri. Icho bimugira, bimugira yuko tuwa hisemoneza. Kuwera kwa dufiti juu kujito ya kandi juu kujito ya dufite tu kwa dusho wala kuchipia zamu saruro bida turuse mugo taka busa ahu kwa tu kwa turuse no mu no mu bugenji tu kwa bonda no mu tuongo uturuse mu bugenji. Hervé, uli CEO wa kompanyi ya we Medmasoft. Muri Medmasofti kora na bohanga muri kore shamuti. Muri Medmasofti tu kwa bugenda tegura za programme za software ngubu dufite software ifasha muri education. Ni system itwa ili mi smart school. Dufite software ifasha small and medium enterprise. Dufite system ifasha direct beneficiary monitoring system. So kuburijo tukebuge dutegura system zishobora gufasha abantu mu bijyanye n’ibikorwa bakora bya buri munsi. Ikora na muhanga rero mu kurikoresha urumva kugira ngo turikore nuko tuba turitegura kugira ngo nabandi barikoreshe. Muri ya konferanse yatangiye ejo iri busozwe uno munsi twagiye twumva abantu batandukanye yaba ari abantu muri private sector abantu bakora muri leta ndetse nabantu bashaka kubyinjiramo bagira icyo bavuga ku kikora na muhanga cyashoye kubafasha mu gutegeka mu kuyobora ibyo bagiye bakoramo ese wowe mu muyoberere y'igihugu cyane cyane ko twegereye Ya 2020 bavu zeyo muri vision ubona ari kibyamari ikibazo igihugu ikora na buhanga ikora na buhanga ritugejeje heza kuko icyambere ikora na buhanga ryihutisha kazi no kuvuga ngo ryihutisha kazi icyakabiri rikagabanya cost kubera ko hari kuzi imwe zagendaga ku bintu rigabanuka ikindi ikora na buhanga rifasha no gukora mu buryo buri transparent nukufuga ngo ibijyanye no no kunyereza imitungo mu bijyanye no kuri umutungo wa leta cyangwa n'ibindi iyo haje mikora na buhanga ryiza rikoze neza bituma ibyo byose bivaho cyangwa bigabanuka nukufuga ngo kwikora na buhanga rigenda rizamuka mu gihugu ni nako hagenda hagabanuka ibyaha bimwe na bimwe biba mu gihugu Muri conference ya Commonwealth ifatanye jemo na ministere y'urubyiruko na ICT twagiye tubona hari abantu baturutse impande zose zo kwisi bakabaje kugera icyo batu batumenyesha ku mumenyi bamaze kugeraho akaba ari uko urebye neza no kugera ngo umumenyi twe tumaze kugeraho tububereke nabo batugezeho umumenyi bamaze kugeraho ese ni izihe namwe dukeneye gutera kugira ngo natwe tugere ku rugero rwa bimwe mu bihugu byaduciye uh, icya mbere gikenewe nuko exchanging a technology no kuvuga ngo uh, abantu bahari ba aba expert bo hanze tukabakoraho technologies imwe tukazizana hano hanyuma uh, ikindi nabo bashobora kutwigiraho nabo bashobora kutwigiraho umuco no kuvuga ngo hakabaho technology exchanging uh, ubwenge bakagira ibyo batuzanira natwe tukagira ibyo tubaha uh, icyo navuga rero muri ya nama tuba twahuriye nabantu batandukanye bamwe bavuye mu Burayi muri Amerika mu bihugu bitandukanye iyo duhuye nabo tuganira nabo tukumva iwabo uko bimeze hanyuma tukareba natwe hano icyo twakora kugira ngo tubashe kugera kuri urwo rwego usibye ko hari ni gihusanga nk'ibihugu dutekereza ko byateye imbere cyane wajya kure ugasanga hari technologies imwe turi turi guhuriraho tugasanga nabo nibwo bakizigeraho 
Afrique Trade license So could you just quickly wrap up what was being said there? Well, he's talking about the fact that um, uh, e-governance is something that Rwanda is really embracing. He himself is the CEO of his own company, uh, MedMasoft, and they use a lot of electronics. They, they use a lot of e, as I like to say. So uh, he's saying that to see what certain countries have achieved um, should be motivation for Rwanda, having to meet uh, that many people at, a, at the same forum from all over the world. And then um, his, Rwanda has been... You know, it, w this is a tech hub. A lot of people are saying this is an internet hub. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been pretty great. All right. Well, cool. Yeah. I, I like that. I like the E thing that's <laughs> happening right now. Right. Now, another story that really caught our attention this week was this year's Customer Service Awards. They say you should give credit where it's due, so service providers should be no different. Last week, the 2015 Customer Service Awards were held here in Kigali with over 300 people in attendance from different sectors of Rwanda's economy. And our very own Fidelis was there to capture it all. Take a look. And the winner. According to popular votes, so the winner is Rwanda Air. It was an action-packed night as both independent companies and government institutions took home different awards for providing the best services to their customers. And for Tigo Rwanda, which took home not one but two awards, the joy was clear to see. I'm extremely happy for this, um, and uh, as, as I was saying before, really this is a recognition of the hard work we've been um, putting as a team um, and um, if you think of this market which is extremely competitive uh, you have to be very proud if you're able to win not only the best um, um, provider of internet uh, but also um, being the best telecom company in, in, in the country. After taking these awards for two years in a row we were curious to find out what the secret behind the continued success was. You know, it boils down to hard work and being really focused on serving customers. Um, we take every feedback we get from our customers seriously. What happens is we review everything customers say and we make sure that we address those concerns. And uh, the team is extremely dedicated. If you go to our service centers um, across the country, uh, if you're calling to our um, hotlines, you'll find that people are really dedicated. So there is a lot of hard work um, and a lot of teamwork which goes into this. And we're very, very proud of, of winning this award. These annual awards were organized by the Service Mag, which celebrated its 50th of service in partnership with the Naomi campaign. With all the sectors of the economy having equal opportunities to win, Sandra, the managing director of the Service Mag, says providing good customer care is how one can guarantee winning an award during these events. 
If companies who want to be voted for, they need to make sure that they give good services to their customers. Customers might not say anything, but when they're given the chance to voice out their opinion, they'll be surprised to hear some of the things that customers say. So my message would rather be for service providers to make sure that they put standards, they put systems, they put procedures in place that will make their, 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 their services to be in level with what the population is expecting. With competitions like these being held in the country, service delivery is up for a major upgrade in Rwanda. Karangwa Fidelis, Rise and Shine Rwanda. And joining us in studio is John Bosco Seravi from the Rwanda Social Security Board, the overall winner of the Service Awards 2015. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, so the first thing I wanted to know is, for so long, we've had a guest here on the show um, uh, having conversations with us about, um, about uh, customer care in Rwanda. For so long, there's been negativity around it. A lot of people saying it's not up to par. I've complained myself, a lot of people have. Um, what do you think these awards are doing to help uh, customer care get better in the country? Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to this show. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good opportunity to discuss this. Uh, I think these awards are very positive. They really show our service providers what customers think about us, what they think about our service, and how they appreciate it. So it's a good feedback. Actually, it's the best feedback you can have because you don't have any way you can influence the, 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 the opinion of the customer. So I think these awards, if they're done uh, every year or periodically, they're going to show us how we stand and how of our service uh, by all service providers. So you were the overall winner and the winner for insurance provider. Now tell me, what is the importance of good customer service in this industry? Because you would think it's something that everyone has to go through anyway. So why is that es extra effort there to make sure that the customer service is good? Uh, at RSSB, we offer services that are, all, that are mandatory, this pension, and some and medical insurance for government uh, employees. However, we don't take that for granted. So we do, we do think we do think like business uh, business. So we offer to our customers the, the the same way we would offer to them if uh, so not mandatory. So what we do, uh, what we've done in the past, uh, we are at every district. We have a branch at every district, so we are close to the people. These branches are online with the headquarters. So any information you can get in Kigali at the headquarters, you can get it at any district, mm. Kirehe or wherever in the country. And, and two, also, we, we, we now pay our pensioners on a monthly basis, not quarterly like it used to be. And as soon as the, the money, money hits on the account of the, of the pensioner, we inform them through an SMS. Uh, we, we want to further go down the line on that, on the pensioners. But also, even the contributors, because now that's the side of the people who are benefiting from that, right, right. from pension. But even, even you, who is contributing, want to offer an SMS service. As soon as your employer pays into your, your, your pension, then we'll let you know, so that you can be able to follow up and don't realize at retirement age that a certain period wasn't paid. Mm -hmm. so, so these are some of the services we've been implementing to, to, to our customers. In terms of medical insurance, we have now more, we have now more uh, subscribers through the pharmacies, uh, hospitals, health centers. So we've broadened out that way. And this, this is how we think we can reach the people. Certainly we'll come any, any, any kind of advice or any opinion f f through our customers to us, whether by phone, email. Uh, we do have a web page. We can go into there and actually follow up the calculations of your pension. Mm. But we want to get to, to an SMS level, the phone level, because the phone is always with somebody. Somebody is not always on the, on the internet. Right. So we want to go deep to do that. And this is what, what we've done along the way. And I'm very happy to note that uh, at least clients are now appreciating. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, how are they um, notifying you of how happy they are now with the service? I mean, you know, you go through the, the phone, the social media, the website, but how do they get to tell you uh, and how much they appreciate the change in customer care? Uh, one, one would tell us is this award. This award was a good communication that, well, we appreciate your service. Now, we have a, uh, customer care desks at, at all our branches. Our branch managers are open to us. Even ourselves, the management, we are open. So customers call in and tell us. I had a person calling me a few, a few months ago telling me that uh, our medical facilitator at uh, one of the medical facilities handled him very well. 
Mm. And he was very appreciative. That's not something you hear and all the time. It's amazing. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> I like so, so I suddenly called a person and said, thank you very much. Right. You're and and service. do you take the negative feedback um, in the same way? Do, is that something that has helped you over the years to, to get better? Certainly. Negative feedback is also good because now you know the areas to, 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 to improve. Actually, I would appreciate if there's any, any aspect, that any client who, is not, uh, uh, who hasn't gotten a good service to directly call us. Right. Come to our headquarters, go to the branch manager, and if there's nothing done, then uh, escalate the issue. Now so the person, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> is, this, is this a result of in-house training, or is it, because I know now there are a lot of um, new schools and new centers that are giving people the proper training that they need to go into the job market. So is this as a, as a result of training that you give in-house, or is it that you're just hiring the right people and you're hiring good people now? I think to, it feeds back from the whole customer care subject aspect, the way the country has taken it. Government has taken this as a very important aspect. So it's, it drives from, uh, from that. We People drive from pride. that kind of uh, uh, momentum that the whole country has, has, uh, has, uh, has developed, uh, right from uh, His Excellency, right. to talk about customer service. So we get everything from that, and then it is taken down to our people. Right. We have discussions on this in the management meetings and discussions with the departments about this. So, th so these things are all being considered and, and yeah. now, you right. know, it's actually being implemented and it's yes. happening. Yes. Well, thank you so much thank for you, joining Mrs. us Sebabi. today. We appreciate you always. joining us this morning. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, and congratulations right. on your wins. Absolutely. Thank you very much. <laughs> What he's talking about there, Mr. Sebabi, I think it's really important. For so long, uh, we've wanted customer care to get to a certain level where it wasn't yet, but now they're giving awards for that. Yeah. So it's going to motivate a lot of people to actually deliver the right. And I think, it's, I think it's really cool that it's a government institution that actually won right. um, the overall award because really they... Okay, sure, they should have customer service, but either way, people are going to have to go to them, right? Absolutely. So I'm, I'm glad that they're deciding to, you know, keep themselves to that, that high like standard. Yes. <laughs> You're watching the review edition of Rise and Shine Rwanda. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Connect to Lusaka three times a week, starting 27th March. Enjoy comfort and safety at affordable fares to 17 other destinations across Africa and the Middle East. Fly our dream to the heart of Africa. All right, welcome back to Rise and Shine Rwanda, the review show. Now, there were some big business stories in the news this week, from the new law that approved the importation of right-handed trucks to the printing business in Rwanda. Let's look back at the vesting business. Advertising is a vital part for the growth of most companies. One of the main aspects of advertising is outdoor advertising and magazine spreads, a business that has been gaining momentum over the past few years in Rwanda. From telecommunication companies to small businesses, they all invest a lot of money to advertise their companies to the public. Earlier this week, Fidelis went to learn more about this flourishing business. Take a look. The all around us in Kigali, John Billboards advertising all sorts of products. And not surprisingly, it's big business in Rwanda. But have you ever wondered how these giant billboards are made? This plant has for a while now been printing everything from billboards to posters to branding material and new to the list is magazines. But making giant adverts isn't all plain sailing, as some people in Kigali would rather not have ads painted on every spare wall in one of Africa's most beautiful cities. Now, although there are very many magazines and newspapers available in the country, the cost of printing is still very high, leading most people to have their material printed in neighboring countries. With the fast growth of print media in Rwanda, it can only be hoped that more business people will explore this business venture to supply printed material in the country. Karangwa Fidelis, Rise and Shine Rwanda. 
And joining us in the studio is Matthew Gwaigigi from Hope Magazine. Uh, welcome, Matthew, to our show. Thank you so much. So we were speaking earlier and you were telling me some of these challenges that you have to face every day when trying to print uh, the magazine to have it ready for your readers. So just explain to our viewers also some of these things that you have to go through every single day when preparing uh, the stories for them on your magazine. Okay, I feel like I was earlier on telling you, uh, when you look at the print world, uh, print media is a little bit different from uh, broadcast, this TV, TV, radio, stuff like that. Because unlike in the broadcast world, in print you, you're investing all the time. Every time you have to bring out an edition, you have to invest in, in print, you have to invest in, uh, in bringing the, the magazines from wherever you printed them from. So uh, it's more of, uh, it's, it's more of uh, capital in, uh, in uh, intensive than, 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 than broadcasts, uh, if I could say, because uh, not per se in terms of uh, what you invest in the first place, or the, the initial capital, but the, the working capital, the day-to-day -day capital. So uh, if you're going to print a magazine, for instance, I'll, I'll take, the, like you said, the, the instance of Hope magazine. If you're going to print today, we are, we are, we are a monthly magazine. So every month you have to go to the print for, for the magazine. You have to invest the same amount like you invested last time, but that's not necessarily the, the, the issue every now and then. You, maybe today, where you printed last month, you won't have the same cost as you had last, the, the previous month. So uh, uh, in the Rwanda case, like, we don't really have that much of printing facilities here. So uh, most of the times you realize that many of the magazines have to go outside the country. They have to go to either to, to Nairobi, some of them even go to Dubai, because that's where they'll get the quality of the, of the prints that they're really looking for. So uh, all this channeled up in, in, into the process and you, you look at the, the cost and the, 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 the cumbersome procedure that you have to go through to get the magazine at the end of the day is quite a little bit uh, very, very, very hectic, mm -hmm. very hectic. Yes. Uh, and uh, perhaps the other thing that you would also want to look at is the process of developing print stories. You see, while you can, you can have very many people be able to do broadcast, you won't have the same thing in the print media because you, you want people who already know what they're doing, who have the skills of writing, who have the talent of writing. So, uh, and that's not very common here. You, that's why you realize that the print media has a lot of uh, foreigners in it. Mm -hmm. You have very many people from elsewhere doing, doing, doing the media world here in, in print because we don't have that much of the language. You, you don't have the good, the good uh, uh, you're not good at the command of the English language, either the French language, even the Kenyan language, you'll have, you'll find very, very few people mm -hmm. uh, really are good at writing the stories in Kenyan and mm -hmm. you'll have the same old faces all the time. Exactly. And at times even more costly than you'll have them in the broadcast world. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, speaking of quality, uh, it's not that we cannot, we cannot get this quality in Rwanda. Is, is that the case or is this this psychology that most people believe that you cannot find good quality here in Rwanda. I mean, with other businesses that I've talked to already, most of them already know that these things, these good quality things can be found here as well. But because of that mentality that everyone already has, that uh, there's no good, good quality in Rwanda, exactly. That's why they find themselves having to import most of the things that they use. Is that the case also in print media? Or is it just the fact that people are not exploring that opportunity to help increase the quality of, of the I, materials I, I, here in Rwanda? I think if I really get your point, that. Uh, at some, at some extent, people really think that quality is from elsewhere, not from within. Uh, people always want to look outside, not, 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 from, not, not within. So, uh, but then uh, I think uh, when you go back to the business aspect, no matter the, the forces of the market are at play. You, you, don't, you don't make decisions just because you, you focus very much on foreign things. Than in business, it's more about the factual, the statistical things. You, 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 you're about making money. It's about making a profit. So you don't just make decisions on emotions. It's not like, I just want to buy from out. I just mm -hmm. want to print from out. No, mm -hmm. it's about what makes sense business-wise. Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of the print industry, I don't want to look at the other sectors because uh, that will become a very big topic about uh, local consumption mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But then when you, go, you get back to the print world, I don't think we really have that much of printing facility in the country. I don't think we, re we have really got to the extent where we have good quality printers here in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. uh, I will give you an example, the likes of, uh, of, of GPS when they were still operational, the likes of uh, Select Calaos. Okay, today they're really getting uh, upping their game. They are trying to, to, to make things work. But then still you realize that the cost of, of a magazine here, if I'm to print it from here, and the high. cost of maybe printing it from Kampala or maybe yes. from D Dubai, if I have the transport mm -hmm. covered, is much, much cheaper than mm -hmm. it is here. So uh, 
it's, it doesn't make business sense printing from home, yet it's more expensive than, than elsewhere. So I don't think the mentality of going outside just just for the sake is more about making business sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Also, uh, there's, there's this... Uh, phenomenon going on that you know print media is dying out so, I mean with the internet going crazy I mean personally I know for me for my news for everything that I do most of the time I'm always checking for things online mm. so what what do you think of that do you think that indeed in the next let's say five years maximum we won't be able to find a magazine or a newspaper somewhere uh, I, I won't give you the laugh I normally give to people who tell me print media is, is Going to ex it's going to extinction. We are going to not have any more print copies on the street. I think that's a phobia that anyone gets when new media comes in. I, I am of the view that when radios started uh, broadcasting, people were saying there won't be more need of newspapers. Mm -hmm. That's a couple of very many years ago. But still, today we still have the papers. Mm -hmm. When TV came, that's the same thing. They're like, now, why do I have to listen to a voice when I can't see the, 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 exactly. the, the pictures when I can be able to hear the voice and the picture at the same time? But then still, we still have radios and they're they are blossoming, not only here in Rwanda, but even where people have really grown very much in terms of media. So uh, I don't really think at any point that print media is going to extinct. I, I can tell you that, uh, I mean, I can... I can I can be sure it's, it's a safe that business to 50, be right now. 100 years from today there will still be a print copy on the street. Uh, Perfect. Uh, because f f media, unlike unlike other products where you say we are revolutionizing, we mm -hmm. are bringing something new, so we are we are we are cut, we are kind of like uh, topping on the old thing, so the old thing is fading out, and then we are bringing in a new phase. Media is about complementarity. Some exactly. uh, when you bring in radio, it goes it hand comes, in hand uh -huh. in some sort so, of way with all the other. Yeah, media. so broadcast can't Very replace true. print, and even if you go online, there are people like me. You you won't give a you book. You always read your magazine I'll all have, the time. I'll have to get a hard copy <laughs> for me to read something. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you yeah. very much, Matthew, for coming to the show. We it's hope to have you again always very soon. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always with an interesting business story there, that Fidelis. I liked it. I like it. And, you know, every time we have Mr... Matthew Guahigi. Uh, right. See, I'm getting there. I'm getting Guahigi. He's, he's so knowledgeable and about any topic, too. I like that. Definitely, definitely. You're watching Rise and Shine's weekly review show. Let's take a look back at the week that was in sports with Arnold Quizera. Well, this week we saw Arnold delve into some interesting sports stories from New Zealand knocking South Africa out to make it to the Cricket World Championship to the newly appointed Amavubi coach. <laughs> Please tell us more, Regis, because clearly this is not my thing. That's right, Makeda. The Federation um, of Rwanda Football Association, FERAFA, finally got their man, John McKinstry, was unveiled as the new national team coach with his first task straight away against Zambia's Chipolopolo. Arnold was at the Ferrafa headquarters earlier this week for the Irishman's unveiling. Check it out. New national team coach John McKinstry has promised an attractive brand of football will be played by the national team Amavubi after officially taking over the head coach role yesterday. And my philosophy, football is an entertainment sport. Okay? People who go to watch football are no different than the people who go to the cinema to watch a movie or go to the theater to watch a play. It is about enjoyment. I grew up watching great attacking football and goals being scored. And for me, I want to play football that the players enjoy to play, but also the supporters get up on their feet and the, the crowd here at the Amahoro Stadium, they will hardly sit down because they are excited. That's where we want to take the team. The 29-year-old Irishman, whose contractual terms with the Rwanda Football Association, Ferrafa, have not been availed to the press, was quick to get off the mark, holding his first session immediately, though noting his age will not matter when it comes to asserting his authority in the dugout. And to advance myself, and so an age, it doesn't matter. I've been coaching in this game for too long, professionally for too long, that out on the pitch, my authority is absolute, and I believe that we will take the game forward. We will make Amavubi better. There is no doubt about that. Firafa President Vincent Zamuita also noted that the age issue did not come into contention in recruiting the world's youngest national team coach. People 
Rwanda is set to take on Zambia in a friendly fixture on Saturday and come into the tie with their highest ever FIFA ranking at 64. But the new man was quick to note that a great challenge lays ahead, but there's still room for success. But I see the beginning of something. I think there are the foundations have already started to be laid. I've looked around in terms of the facilities <coughs> the association and the, the staff that are already here and the ones that are to be appointed as the president has already spoken about. There are the seeds of something to grow. So for me, I've seen a great potential. I have other offers from places where I could have had an easy life. I could have went to national teams where they maybe would have said, for the next five years, we just want you to develop and we will pay you lots of money and you won't be under any pressure. But that is not for me. I want there to be pressure to win and to develop. That is what I live for. And so here, there is a big challenge. There are expectations for us to improve and to become better and to play better football and to win games of football. That pressure is, is real. But I enjoy that pressure. That is what football at this level is about. And so, those are really my motivations. It is a challenge, but there are, is the potential for success. With over a decade since Rwanda's last qualification in the Africa Cup of Nations, success at next year's Chan competition is seen as a daunting task for the new Amavubi coach. Arnold Quizera, Rise and Shine, Rwanda. Joining us in studio is our usual pundit and guest, Moses Kahiji. Moses, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so, Moses, you have been part of this, seeing the process of the recruiting of the Ferrafa coach. Yeah. First of all, is John McInstry the right man for this job? I think uh, it's not a point of, 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 of uh, John McInstry where he's coming from. It's what he brings on the table. I think that's the most important uh, aspect here. Uh, John McInstry, we've seen he has coached in the past the Sierra Leone national team and he really performed well and he's a very confident young man. I think he has a huge task ahead of him. He's come at a very critical uh, period of time where Rwanda is going to, you know, to host the, the, Chan, uh, the Chan tournament. So I think right now is, is a very critical time for Rwandan football. We are revolutionizing everything. We are starting from scratch building the, the 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 raw talent the young talent so i think he comes at the right at the right time and i like the fact that he's he's young he's going to be there with the with the players he's gonna he's going to be technical he's going to push them he's going to be there with them all the way so i think i yeah. think it's a good guy yeah some yeah. something that you you know caught my ear that you mm. just said there he's a very good young man do you mm. feel uh he will assert his authority because you know he is 29 years old mm. yes age is not a factor mm. but Will he be able to command the Sol Buteras, you know, mm. players of the, the Mujis, you, mm. know, you know, those players who are older, mm. Olivia Quizera? Mm. Will he be able to tell them, you know what, mm. I don't care if you're 32, if you're 34, mm. I want it done this way. And do you think they will listen to him? I think leadership is not about age, it's about your character. And uh, it depends, it will depend on what he brings on the table. Uh, if he uh, asserts himself as, as a person of character, I think his character is going to, to really shine through. And uh, footballers are very disciplined people. They will look up to him, they will listen to him, and I think he's going to, to, to make something. Some may not yeah. agree with you about the discipline of footballers there. Mm. But now, uh, going on to another aspect, still in the coaching sector, mm. um, a Nash, the assistant coach of the Amavubi, again, mm. right now we are dealing with two APR coaches, mm. uh, uh, Vincent Mashami coming in to assist. Do you think it's a right strategy to have a coach coaching a club mm. to also be an assistant coach with the national team? I think it gives you, uh, it, it, you know, football is, 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 about, uh, is about the diversity. When it, it exposes you, I think the exposure is going to get in these two portfolios. I think it's going to come into play because 
you learn every minute, you learn every day. So I think that won't be much of a factor. I think uh, it's. I think. I think even uh, being there, we know when you're a coach, you're an observer. You you and at the same time you're a participant. So I think this diversity, this uh, diverse, uh, this exposure is going to really come into play, and uh, and uh, let's hope for good results. Yeah. So Vincent Mashami taking on two roles there. He is grooming. Mm -hmm. I think he's being groomed for one day to take the reins of the national team coach. Um, it's still talk locally best coaches. Mm. Ferafa is coming up with a program yeah. for uh, locally best coaches. Yeah. Uh, you've been working on that pro pro project. Mm. What are the fundamentals of this project? Who is it targeting and when is it going to be rolled out? Yeah, I think uh, I read somewhere Ferafa is really has started up a robust program, not only growing uh, local talent, but even local coaches. So I think the technical going back to the roots, going back to the drawing board is very key here. And uh, the results might not come instantly, but along the, along the way, <clears throat> in the coming years, I think we shall be, see a difference. And we are, I'm looking at a time where we shall have sound technical local coaches, Rwandan coaches. We, we shall, I'm looking at a time when we shall even, <coughs> you know, uh, export coaches <laughs> to other countries, like, like how McKinstry has come from Northern Ireland and is not going to coach in Rwanda. We shall also send people to, to Nigeria, to other countries. So I think uh, uh, I like the, the program that Ferrafa is involved in and uh, I'm just optimistic about it. We are, we are, we are, we are not only going to get uh, the other side of, of the football fraternity, which is the, f the, the good talent, but we are also going to have a pool of coaches, which mm. is commendable. And now moving on to the team that's going for uh, the Mavubi team going t uh, to Zambia yeah. uh, uh, in, in a day's time. Mm. Um, there are some shockers, and uh, I, I don't know if you've keenly been following the league as much. Mm. Gichumbi, which is ranked number four mm. on the National Football League, mm. number four mm. on the National Football mm. League, yeah. a team based uh, outside of Kigali, mm. does not have a single player. This is a team that has beaten APR, mm. it has beaten Rayon Sports, mm. it has beaten Police at home. Mm. It doesn't have a single player in the national team. Mm. We are calling players in like Saul Butera who have mm. not played a single campaign mm. of the, you know, who have not played half the season mm. because of different issues and they are being brought straight back into the team. Mm. Do you feel that was a right move by the technical directors? Or uh, why aren't they giving ch uh, chance to the form players from teams like Gichumbi and Amagaju? Mm. You know, uh, football is a risky business. When you come out of the blue, even if you are really talented, it's, it takes time for, for even the technical team to have confidence in you. You can play in the local league and really perform, perform well, but it takes a lot. It takes more than, uh, more than, more than your... your your, your skills to actually be on the on to play on that level. Yeah. No, sometimes <laughs> listen. You you can um, uh, you know you know the stage fright. Do you know the stage fright, yeah, which I is know. very common in sports. Yeah. Someone can reach on a on a good level. They have been really really playing well in the local league, but when they go on another on on a bigger level, you see they 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 they've gotten cold feet. So I think here experience. I think the taking the decision was was uh, motivated by, 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 it dis by, by, by the, the, the fear to, 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 to bring these young these youngsters young on, oh, okay. yet they, they might. Oh, you know. Okay, mm. thank you, Moses. I would like to disagree with you mm. a little bit there, but mm. I guess that's for another time. Yeah. Uh, thanks again for coming to Rise and Shine, Randa. Yeah. Sports analyst Moses Gahigi speaking there to Rise and Shine's Arnold Quizera earlier this week. Right. Good stuff. Good stuff. New <laughs> coach. Can't wait to see what Amavubi is going to do. All right. Stay tuned. We'll be right back and to take a look at this week's lifestyle story. Connect to Lusaka three times a week, starting 27th March. Enjoy comfort and safety at affordable fares to 17 other destinations across Africa and the Middle East. Fly our dream to the heart of Africa.
Earlier this week, I met with a man who, even if you think you're not familiar with, you probably are. His voice covers Rhonda's radio airwaves, having produced hundreds of advertisements and several radio shows. He has also been hosting some of the biggest events in the country since the early 90s. His vocals are easily some of the most recognizable to the masses here in the hills, but do you really know Lion Imanzi? Take a look. Wow. Having been at it for decades, Lion has really gotten a firm handle on the industry, having emceed some of the biggest events in the country, like Primus Guma Guma and Miss Randa. But where did he get his start? It's a, it's a very strange story because I grew up not liking my voice at all. When my voice started to change as a, as a, as a young adolescent uh, teenage boy, uh, I didn't really like much. My, my voice was getting deeper, but people kept complimenting me, saying, oh, you sound nice, you sound good, you should try radio. So I tried. I tried back in the, uh, in the 90s, and then it worked out for me. I did uh, some, some commercials, the commercial side doing advertisement, and the uh, emceeing side uh, started in 93 when I, um, I, did, uh, I, I, I did the Miss Rwanda, Miss Rwanda 94, but it was in December of 93. The person who was supposed to advertise it couldn't be available, so they asked me to chip in, to step in, and then I did, and they liked it, so I, I never stopped ever since. His passion for media is undeniable, but did you know that he's a musician first and foremost? I do a great many things, but I'm an artist in a general sense. I, I, I started off in the 90s again as a musician. Uh, then the tragic events that happened here in Rwanda, the genocide in 94, kind of put that to a halt. Uh, then I find myself like, like a lot of Rwandese in exile. And, and I went more into a survival mode than anything. So when I came back to Rwanda, and that's uh, now in the 2000s, uh, so 2004 is when I came back, that's when the radios were starting up. Uh, uh, Contact FM, for which I work, uh, was starting in, in December of 2004, uh, going forward. So uh, listening to the different uh, radios that I were at that time, uh, I, I figured that's something I wanted to do. So I went more into that. And the more I did it, the more people would see me. And then I got more into advertising. And somehow the, the musical career took a, 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 went, went at the back a little bit. Uh, and, and I always wanted, by the way, and still today, wanted to put it at the front because people who knew me before knew that I'm a musician. But people who know me now, post-94, they don't know. Most of the people don't know. But uh, uh, with, with Guma Guma, that, that helped in pro populari popularizing me, uh, is the one where people saw me singing for the first time, like, oh, wait a minute, this guy can also sing? Yeah, so it all started there. But I, I've been in the studios, I've been busy, and, and uh, I should come up with something real good real soon. With a career like his, I had to ask him if he had any words for the young up-and-comers in the game. Uh, I would say dare, dare to dream big. And don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. I, I, I discovered slowly by slowly, I, I, as I told you earlier, I, I, I hated my voice growing up. Then people told me that it's nice, it sounds nice, especially on the phone. I was like, okay, maybe let me try that. So I tried it. I tried myself at emceeing, at advertising, because I refused to limit myself. I, re I simply refused to limit myself. If, if I look at something and I feel if another human being can do it, then I can do it. So don't limit yourself, dare to dream big. No doubt about it. With experience on deck and a lion's roar, we wouldn't be surprised to see industry domination from this media giant. Makeda Mahadio, Rise and Shine Ronda. Nipe is there, Makeda. Uh, I thank like you that. very much. So um, he does reggae, right? Yeah, he, he sings reggae. So mm -hmm. he, he does it professionally? Because he says I'm, I'm an artist first, so he's a professional artist. Yeah, I mean, if you heard the music that was in the background, uh, that's one of the songs that he's recorded. And I think he's trying now to get more into into music. But a lot of people, if they know about the live music scene here in Rwanda, then you've seen them performing. He used to perform um, at Milkolin before the, the band that's there now quite a bit. Um, and he performs at Primus Guma Guma every time. He, he's the one that's hosting every time. So he performs there a lot with his, with his band. And a lot of times when there's um, concerts around town, or, and especially like on Bob Marley Day right. or different things like that, he's always performing and he's great. 
Now, um, he works on radio as well. Has he told you that he maybe wants to, uh, I don't know, touch television a little bit? Um, I, I think that uh, he will be doing some television soon. Um, some people may have heard or may have not have heard, but Contact FM, like other radio stations now, are, are starting to get a little bit into TV. And he's there at Contact, so I think he's going to do a little bit of TV soon, but he is... I mean, like, he's seriously the voice. He's amazing on radio. And if you've heard any ad, more than likely, I know, I have, it is I have. him. His voice is very distinctive, too. But, I mean, he's been doing it since 93. Yeah. That's like 22 years. Yeah. And did you see that photo? You will not believe it's him. I mean, he's very tough and, you know, bearded, fully bearded, but... That's pretty good. What is it like working with, with him at the same stage? Um, it's really cool, actually. And it's not only just uh, working at the radio together, because we've also done events together. Right. Like you saw, I just did um, the Miss, Miss Randa, Randa, right. uh, Randa yeah, competition. He was actually one of the MCs as well on that, on that. And it was really funny to think that, you know, he was kind of MCing that event and he MCed the 94 Miss Ronda. I mean, that's just crazy that's to me. Years um, apart. Yeah, yeah. And he was telling me actually that he saw, I think, or heard from the Miss Ronda that won that year and she's still beautiful and she's still doing her thing. <laughs> I was like, that's great. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool working with him. He's, he's awesome and um, very professional. I mean, you hear all the ads that he does all of the time. Right, right. I mean, he produces all of those and he you just hear him all the time on his recorder right, and right. just like uh, doing i think he does i mean he said i said hundreds before but he was saying he wouldn't be surprised if it's thousands because he's been doing it for you know for years unbelievable so, does he yeah. have an album out something um, people can no purchase? no i think he's working on one now like i said he's trying to get back into music but i just find someone like him to be so inspiring because you know he's a media personality everyone's heard his voice a lot of people see him, I mean, and I mean all over the country because he does all of these road shows with Primus Guma Guma and he's right. been doing it for years and it's like one of the biggest events um, here. So everyone knows him as a media personality, but he's still sticking to the music that he loves to do and it just shows that if you're doing one thing, it really doesn't stop you from doing something else You can still do what you, you love, do. right? Yeah, Your passion sure. should always count. For sure, and he works so hard, he has a great work ethic, so, I mean, you know, anyone who wants to follow in his footsteps, go ahead and go do ahead. it. Go ahead, absolutely. Yeah. That was for a great sure. piece right there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Now, don't forget, we love to hear your thoughts, comments, and feedback on what we're talking about here on Rise and Shine Ronda. Tweet us at Rise and Shine RW. We are constantly looking out for you. Like us on Facebook, send us ideas for programs, tag us in photos, you know, hang out. Check out our Rise and Shine Ronda YouTube page where you can catch all the shows and reports that we upload daily. Find us on Instagram, Rise and Shine RW. We'd love to see your photos. Or check out our Rise and Shine Ronda website. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We'd love to hear your feedback, so do let us know if you have an idea for the program. You've been watching the weekly review edition of Rise and Shine Ronda with me, Regis Isheja. And me, Makeda Mahadio. We'll be back here same time, same place on Monday, but please do join us then. Not but, but do. Do join us then. It's, I'm sorry, it's Friday, man. I'm just right. excited. I'm excited I'm too. so excited for the weekend. Right. Anyway, for now, from the both of us and the rest of the Rise and Shine team, have a very good day and an even better weekend. Bye-bye.